Well hi there, today we're going to paint some fresh fruit. You'll need some brushes, you'll need a clean palette. The reference image and the and clean water. The reference image and the line drawing you can get from the website and the full video on, on how to do it you can download from my website, mysproutstudio.com.au. I've transferred the light line drawing to my paper, take the paper down and we are ready to roll. So grab your biggest brush, dip it in some very clean water and just uh, wet the area of the fruit, leaving the segments that you want to keep white without any water on them. So these bits will be guarded and not wet with either pigment or water for the entire process of the painting. So we're just wetting this area down. The initial layer I'm putting on is a transparent yellow. So we just want to lay that in loosely, guarding around. You will notice that I'm holding my brush up quite high on the neck. I'm not choking it, so stay loose. Guard your whites and lay in your first layer of a warm transparent yellow or a cool transparent yellow, whichever you like, but transparent is the key. Now there's a reflection on the bench so we will include that. We've got a reflection and a shadow so we will include the reflection and that will be part of the process as we begin this um, wet in wet area of laying down the colours for our fruit. So mix yourself up a nice a warm orange with a yellow and red. You may have already a colour already mixed but I choose to mix my own. They are still both transparent water watercolours. So a transparent yellow and a transparent Red, they are both warm colours, which gives me a nice clean orange. If I mix a warm um, yellow and a cool red, I will get a slightly muddy diversion. Keep them both on the warm or both on the cool. Completely up to you what you do, but whether they're warm or cool, but um, have an experiment with your colours before you even start so you can find the orange that pleases you most that represents the mandarin because they are a really beautiful orange colour. Now I've laid the pigment down in that reflection area. We want to keep that area uh, as part of it. The segment of mandarin that is on the shadow side is a slightly cooler colour. So I've used a cool red, uh, which is a lizard and crimson in this particular case, to mix with a cool yellow. And um, that is because cool colours tend to look appear to be further away, warm colours appear to be closer. Still very, very wet. We are happy to have that uh, pigment roll down over um, the reflection area. It was early in the morning and the sun was streaming in on my kitchen bench and it was just made a beautiful light to take a photo of um, this mandarin for our reference photo today and it's mandarin season here in Australia so they're quite beautiful at the moment. Keep dabbing it, dabbing in your pigments. Don't uh, lay the pigment down and let the water do the job. You don't want to um, torture the pigments. So you drop it in and let the water take it for a run. Um, again, not holding the brush down low, it's about halfway. I'm working in a fairly tight area, so I've sort of stuck down the brush a little bit to get a better control, but generally you want to be up fairly high on your brush so that your, your painting remains loose. Um, we are not doing botanical studies, that's a whole different thing, and you would, you know, work very small and very tight, but this is an impression of a mandarin. We're not doing a botanical study of a mandarin. So let the pigments do the do the work and let the water take you on a, a, a nice ride. I've mixed up a very clean pleasing orange. Now you will um, may need to experiment with your pigments to find uh, orange that you're very happy with. Um, 
have an experiment before you start and choose the colours that do give you a pleasing colour of orange, um, a pleasing um, mixture of red and yellow. There is no blue in this. At this stage we're looking at pure colour, so we're only using um, red and yellows. At this stage we haven't put any blue in here at all. So we're pushing it from the... Um, the yellows, we're pushing it to the reds, we're going, we're playing a warm against um, cool. So the part of the mandarin that's in the shadow on the torn mandarin, it is going more to the cooler colours. The mandarin that's in the full sun there on that I'm working on now, um, I'm using the more of the warmer oranges. So then around the white section, because the white section is the light, that will give your mandarin some form. So I'm using a, um, a yellow in that area. I'm adding it also to the reflection because it's like a mirror. The reflection on the bench is it's like a mirror. So we add, add that in. Okay, so the, um, we want to maintain a soft edge around that light. So just dip your brush in the water, dab it on your paper towel and soften off that yellow. We don't want to have a hard yellow line around that light. So we just soften it off by the um, method of dipping the brush into water, drying it on your paper towel and then I just did a little swirl with it to um, soak up some water and soften off the edge. So we're taking um, our tones uh, deeper again so we're adding um, darker orange. We make watercolours darker by mixing more pigment with the water. Um, so if the more water we have the lighter the pigment and here I've started to drop in some of the winds of blue because that's in our shadow area. So the Windsor Blue is um, part of the shadows because it's complementary to the orange. So blue and orange are complementary on the colour wheel, which means they're opposite on the colour wheel. And so I'm dropping that in on some of the deeper shadow areas and really starting to build the shadows in there now because we have begun with the light and we're working towards the darks. And... The lights, um, the second layer is probably the, um, the biggest and the loosest and then as we start building these darks we start to get a, a bit more controlled and a bit more strategic about where these go and where we're going to put them and exactly what they are. Now if you're going to use the Winds of Blue um, be warned, uh, that on, and thalo blue are very, very strong colours, so you will not need very much of them. So treat them with caution and go lightly. Uh, don't freak out if they start to look really heavy, but um, there are ways around it, but just go carefully. Now this part of the mandarin that's in on the shadow side is its deeper tone and it looks a little bit more red. So I've gone in with some um, alizarin crimson with just a little bit of um, uh, one of the yellows. I can't remember which one now. And um, there's not a lot of yellow in it. But I'm starting to build in the, um, the darker tones that are on that side of the mandarin. Guarding those whites, there's parts of the white on that sand, the white pith that's really catching the light. So we want to dance around those and we don't want to cover them up. We want to make sure we keep those and, and conserve them. We'll just um, indicate the edge of the bench there just so we've got our mandarin sitting on something and not floating in mid-air. And I'm mixing up a, um, a bit of grey because I notice that there are quite a bit of shadows. So the grey is made by mixing my oranges that I'm using with my Windsor Blue that I had for my shadows. So um, we're keeping this a very limited palette 
and we're just dropping that into the darker areas and you'll see on the reference photo that there are some areas that are quite dark. Because the area on the left there is very wet, um, that grey has decided to run up so we just tilt the page and, and tip it so that it um, gets back down there where it belongs. Don't use your brush to control that. Let the pigment flow in the water and then we can just let this dry, let that layer dry completely. Once that's dry, um, and let it dry naturally, don't um, try and dry it with a hairdryer or anything, just sit, sit in the sun, but hairdryers tend to flatten your colours and um, I'm not a huge fan of using the hairdryer to dry the painting. And I do know that we can be impatient, but it might be time for a cup of tea or time to go and have a little play with the kids or the dog or, or get something started for dinner. So now we're starting to really build in, um, build in some darks. So we've mixed, uh, I've used the Windsor Blue and the Orange and I'm, and I'm fairly heavy with the pigments. So the pigments you will notice are getting darker which means that there's more paint in with there. And this is where I'm carefully taking my very pointy little brush and getting around at the bottom of that fruit where there's that lovely little shadow, that little triangle of shadow in between the two fruits. And it also runs around the bottom of the far right hand side as well. That shadow tends to run off down into that right hand bottom corner and um, so we'll just soften it off there but it's strongest under the fruit because that's where the strongest shadow will be because as it moves further away from the fruit it gets more light and so the shadow is well still there um, will start to lighten up a bit. So we're taking that same um, neutral grey which is a little bit on the orange side so it's a mixture of the orange and the blue that we're using in here in this painting and I'm starting to pick out the darkest tone areas down in the center of this uh, mandarin between the segments. Trying to follow the shapes that are in there so we're looking for the shapes that are there there's some edges of those shapes that are quite striking and strong and some edges are soft. Now you can use the, um, the small brush to pick out the shape of the edge and then use your round brush dipped in water and dabbed onto your paper towel to soften off the edges on one side so that you get one side that's got a hard edge and then one side that it sort of drifts off if you like. So just keep that in mind, dip it in the water spread it out um, and get follow the shape of the segments so that you're still getting that shape with the hint of shadow there. It doesn't have to be particularly strong um, to describe what's going on. So you'll notice that I follow the way that the segments go and trying to describe the shape the way this mandarin is shaped and its lovely roundness. Keep your brushes clean. So I'm going, I've mixed up a, um, a much stronger um, orange and I've, this time I've added um, alizarin crimson into my orange rather than the um, Windsor Red that I was using and a tiny, tiny touch of Windsor Blue to neutralize that shadow. Um, so to tone it down a little bit. So we've still got, um, and we want to soften off this edge. We don't want the shadow to end in a hard edge on while the fruit's still round because it won't describe the fruit. Our fruit's not angular, it's soft and round. Um, the only harder edge will be where um, the edge of the fruit and the background. So that edge we can have hard, but the fruit that's on the round part of the fruit, we want to keep that soft so brush in the water dab it on your paper towel soften off the edge so we don't end up with a hard edge around our round fruit 
in our round fruit because then it'll start to look a bit funny. <coughs> so I'm getting a warm orange and I'm adding that in there to really lay some pigment in there. Um, wet the brush, soften it off, getting that to all blend in nicely. Laying the pigment in fairly strongly and then, then softening it off um, to keep that area nice and soft. So that area is wet so I've just decided to go in there with some more pigment to really strengthen up the orangeness of this beautiful mandarin. And down in this little corner down the bottom where the two the shadow between the two fruits it's it's quite strong it's a very strong area of color so we're looking at those areas we're all the time looking for where's the darks where's the sort of shapes of the darks and where's the shapes of the lights um, if we if we move away from um, trying to paint a mandarin to, to paint the shapes that represent a mandarin um, I think we'll have more success but I have faith I know that you can do this so we're really getting some pigments to um, come in now and work around our lightest spot we want to keep that there we've got a little um, a little bit of a shadow there that describes the way the skin um, the, sk the skin shape over the um, segment on the inside now the, the torn and half mandarin, we're looking to build up layers in there of our darks. We can see the little white pithy lines that are in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint around those, if you like. So we're doing lines of dark that, um, but we want to keep lines of light that are part of our original layers because we've got a lovely variation happening there and some very um, some nice shapes that will, will help describe the shape of our mandarin so we're going in there and we're building up layers and we're building them up in lines if you like so we're leaving our lines our pith lines because that helps us um, describe what a mandarin segment looks like um, water on the brush softening off some edges of those lines we don't want it to be all lines so we're just using water to soften up the edges there's a few little bright spots in there so we can add those in and our mandarin is starting to take shape but it's still looking a little bit um, soft and vague uh, there, there are things that you can do. So um, when you put man, when you put mandarins, dear idea, when you put down pigment, watercolor pigment first up, um, it can appear scarily dark, but um, it always dries a shade or two lighter. So don't panic. It's not the end of the earth. You can do this. And so I'm going back in with my uh, cooler orange and putting some warmer orange down the bottom because it's closer to me. Cooler orange at the top where it's further from me and softening off the edges because around the edge there we have that lovely white um, pith line. So I'm going in now with a very strong um, orange that helps describe the edge of the skin um, against the pit so I'm just doing a careful line around there then I'm taking my wee brush dipped in water softening off the edge on this side on closest to the mandarin and when I get around to the other side I'm softening off the edge that's the skin that's on the bottom side of the mandarin just going to add some more pigment in there because it is quite um, strongly colored in that particular area so we help build up the tonal differences there there's a lovely little yellow thing happening up in there like where the stem was or something um, there's a fair bit of light it's not really white but it's it's quite light um, so we just keep building our layers dropping in the darks underneath there because it does get quite dark in that little section underneath on the um, shadow side of the mandarin Time for a drink of water. Oh, 
Okay, just review and um, take a good look at your image, um, see how you're going, walk away from it. You know, don't forget to walk away. You don't have to do this all in one session. You can walk away and leave it and come back to it. Um, just remember to um, be sure that your edges are soft where you want them to be soft. Now down in this little tricky business down in the center and it probably doesn't really matter that much because when you squint your eyes and look at it you only see that there's sort of variations in color and it's quite a strong almost burgundy color down there so just do some dibble dabbles down there and then soften them off um, and that will describe that area. It doesn't really matter that much as long as the tone is right and there's some variation in it, it will describe it. So um, I can't tell you what it is because I got, I got completely lost and it doesn't really matter. So we're just building up the tone here. I'm using the alizarin crimson with a, um, with a cool yellow and a dab of just a tiny, tiny little bit of the Windsor Blue to really get that tonal depth in that area because it is quite burgundy almost. It's almost burgundy down there in the center if you have a good look at it. There's some lovely shapes at the bottom of this mandarin and where the segments meet, that little V, it's quite pretty. So try and describe those shapes. I think that they are um, quite lovely to just capture those with the alizarin on your um, in your darker area there to really describe those <coughs> that deep section that's in the in the center of the mandarin so again putting the pigment down softening it off with just a water brush I lost a little piece of white there you may have may have noticed um, in that center but never mind no one will know unless they look at the rest reference photo will they so again just describing the segment shapes there with the, um, the strokes of the brush And if any of those strokes start to look too hard, you can always just dip your brush in water, dab it on your towel and give them a little scrub to soften them up, um, which is what I'm doing there now. So we've got some quite strong orange going on down in here and we can build up the layers of, just flick some colour in there. It's quite um, quite a beautiful colour in there. So, and it's it's almost <clears throat> it's almost ruby red colour. So, we will keep building up those layers until we get the colour that pleases us. Back into the darks, we want to pick up those darks again. Really push those darks because the comp the uh, contrast between the light and the dark is what helps us describe the fruit. And to give it form. So softening that off. Shadow is always um, softer as it moves away from the object. Don't forget that little tiny triangular piece of shadow in between the fruits because that's quite an important piece. You can build some shadows around the fruit start to build in the depth into that area around where the fruit match meets the inside of the pith of the skin and we're doing that with that um, neutral gray that we made with um, our blue our Windsor blue in my case and the orange now don't just do a straight line you want to vary vary your lines you want to have some parts that are quite strong and other parts that are just miss so just don't do a line that's all the way around so keep it soft keep variation there and um, you will start to, to really build up some form there and just dab it here and there you really have to you you're doing in 
small, small bits at this time. This stage, you're getting towards the end of the painting. You've gone through that middle stage where it's all looking flat and dull and you're really working into the final stage of the painting. And these are, the tiny touches make a difference at this particular stage. So um, keep the touches soft, but you also want to build some strength. And because you're building the strength and you're using a darker tone, you want to make sure that um, you don't overdo it. So I've decided to go back in with um, with the cadmium orange wash over my far side fruit, my left hand left hand fruit to really um, really build the orange up because as it dried, the colour wasn't strong enough. You might find that too, so you might need to go back in and build some more layers in there to get a pleasing orange that really represents the mandarin. It, because they're such a beautiful colour and um, so I just washed over all the previous layers now because the um, because it is transparent this this particular one's a cadmium orange and it's a semi-transparent so I, you can see through it but not a lot so it's quite a strong covering that gets but as you can see where it's gone over the parts that we've done in shadow it, it you can still see the shadow so keep um, if you want to put in some strong orange over the top of it go for it because it really does um, give it some oomph to really give it a highlight and really gives it that final touch so we will really push these darks now we'll get some really darks happening there to get our fruit to sit down and cast a shadow and and we do the same thing, we're softening it off, we lay the paint down, then soften it off with our brush that's been dipped in water, dabbed on the paper towel to take out the excess water and soften that off. Add a bit more of our pigment into our reflection so that we've got that lovely reflection well described um, in our image. Very close to the end now. Step back, take a look at it, see what you think you might need to do to it. Um, you can add a few splatters, so just tap, dip it in the pigments that you've already used and splatter that over it to give it a little bit of life and, and it's always fun. Go easy with the blue. It's still wet, so they will run and they will soften, so that is all good. So I think we're done. Congratulations and well done for completing the project. Now it's time to sign it. So sign it and don't forget to hit uh, subscribe. Join me on a another program.